What? You want to talk about activity? What, activity in care homes? Really? Nah, you don't want to be talking about that. Is anyone bothered? I don't know whether they, I don't know whether they are. Because it always seems a bit of a poor relative. Can I not talk about somebody else? Websites or search engine optimization. You want to talk about activities? Are you sure? Should we just tick a box? Should we do a talk and just tick a box? Activities, you say? Just buy a few quiz books, eh? And a bingo machine and some cards. And that'll keep people busy. Busy, yeah. Not much else. Is activity in care homes really important? Are we bothered? Well, I'm bothered. I'm really bothered. Because I've never played bingo in my life. Activities matter. And I'm just going to show you why. Let's crack on. How do you do? My name's Big Ian. I speak at conferences. I write books. I've written a book called Dear Dementia. I've written a book called The Missing Piece about bereavement and grief. I've written a book called The Pocket Full of Kindness. And I've written a book about neurodiversity called Never Stop Drawing. So to everybody who works as an activity provider, an activity coordinator, a lifestyle, whatever you call yourselves, I'm not bothered. I don't care what the badge is. I care about the job you do and the difference you make. You're not just an activity provider. You're not just, just, just. Let's get rid of just. Look at the difference you're making to somebody. Look at the smiles you're creating. As activity providers, you manufacture happiness every single day. Because there's two words you need to take from this talk and that is simple. You matter. You matter. Every day you go to work, you matter. Because you show the people who you are doing activities with that they matter. You matter more than I think some places realise. You are the difference in that person's day. Thank you to Majestic Care for sponsoring this session. This isn't just me talking. I'm going to show you real activity and the difference little daft ideas can make. How many people in the world of care have activity way down the list? Is it icing on the cake? A bit of an afterthought, a bit of an add-on, a bit of a storm porch. Activity isn't an add-on. It's an integral part of care. Activity isn't icing. It's part of the cake. So should we just keep people busy? Just let the time pass. No. That's existence. We need people to be alive, to realise that the same heart beats in them when they're 11, when they're 21, 31, 41, 101. We need to get people excited. And why not? Surely it's more fun for us if the people who we're caring for are happy. Because care is basically just two things. Keeping people happy and stopping them being unhappy. And where we're going to do this is with activity. Before you start on any activity though, there's two things I need you to really focus on. And it's two things that I think are often overlooked. Before you embark on any activity with anybody, I want you to think about people's sensory problems. Because I'll tell you now, make sure that these are my glasses. Make sure that these are the glasses that I can see through. And make sure that they're clean. Because if these aren't clean, I'm really struggling to see. And that is a simple thing, but it can mean that your activity can fail. Now, if you think that's a big one, try this. You can't tell this by looking at me, but I'm just gonna show you this, and it might surprise you. These are my hearing aids. Now, these are the most complicated things on planet Earth. And only I know if they work. You need to do some major 
research into how hearing aids work and to make sure that they're clean and I need both of them to work. If my hearing aids don't work, I'm not included. I'm excluded. I can't hear. I've lost so much of my hearing. Can you imagine how frustrating it is when you're in a room full of people and you can't hear? I can, and it's awful. To feel isolated, surrounded by people, it's tough. Make sure that my glasses are right, that my hearing aids are right, and then I can be involved and part of something and it feels amazing. If either of these isn't working, I'm excluded. And no matter how good your best intentions are, your activity and your beautiful ideas are gonna fall on deaf ears. So what's your favorite day of the week? Do you know what? Monday gets a bad press, doesn't it? The Boomtown Rat Sam. I don't like Mondays. Tell me why I don't like Mondays. And then the cure, Friday they're in love. And as for Craig David, he's particularly fond of Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Apparently he chilled on Sunday, but it's what we fill our days with that makes the difference. And activity is all about filling those days, filling them up to the brim so that people have wonderful activity that really makes them feel alive, that makes them want to jump out of bed so that Monday feels different to Tuesday, feels different to Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, so it all feels different. We can make a Monday feel like a Saturday. We have that freedom to do that. I remember when I was a teacher in a special school, there were a load of teachers and I used to say, what are you doing with the kids this morning? Well, first up we're doing colouring in, yeah, and what are you doing after break? Well, we're doing history, and what are you doing? Well, there's a lot of um, worksheets that need colouring in, and then we're going to do maths, and we're going to do all about fractions. Oh, fractions, and what are you going to do? Well, you're going to colour in the fractions. And I just thought, that's keeping the kids busy, but they're learning now. We need activity that's proper, that stretches people, that no matter what has been stolen by dementia or learned disabilities or whatever, we stretch people. We make people excited and challenged by the activities that we give them. That's what we need to do. We need to find activities that fit the person and fit the needs. It's not about what's the best activity. It's about what's the best activity for you. I remember at the end of term, the number of teachers that just used to stick a video on, stick the kids in front of them, and there you'd be there for an hour, hour and a half. And then they'd wonder why they'd be unsettled, why they'd be wanting to be getting up and all this sort of stuff. Do you want to know why? Because they're bored. We want to be engaged, we want to be excited, we want to be interested, we want to be working together. You don't get togetherness when you just sat watching something. Sat watching telly is not an activity. If people are bored, time goes slow. Time flies when you're having fun and the devil will find work for idle hands to do. So let's not give people idle hands. Let's keep them busy. Let's find out what makes them tick. Let's find out what makes them happy. Let's find out what makes their heart beat faster. Let's find out what they want to talk about. One day I walked into a care home and Wimbledon was on and there they were having a cup of tea and I thought I'm going to join in here. I'm going to rattle this room and I just went go on then Borg or McEnroe and the room suddenly erupted. All of you Beyond Borg fans, all of you McEnroe fans, all of that, suddenly, no, he was better because of this, he was better because of this, I didn't like his tantrums, oh, he was gorgeous, all this sort of stuff. And then you go, Martina versus Chris Everett, and suddenly the conversation was bouncing round, bouncing round, and then somebody brings in Serena Williams. What? Can we compare Serena with Martina? Everybody's talking, they're all passionate about something. Nadal and Federer, and then somebody brings in Djokovic. What's he doing there? One thing started that fire of conversation, of belonging, of togetherness. Borg or McEnroe. All you need is one thing to get people talking, 
to get people engaged, to get people discussing and passionate and having fun. And then we were able to use YouTube and find old matches between these people and find old interviews. And it was like being a genie in a bottle. They would say, oh, do you remember that game? And I went, I'll just find it. Boom, there you go. And then you write, Beyond Borg, best bits. Boom, there you go. McEnroe, swearing. Boom, there you go. You've got it all. Using that technology is incredible. I've got some bad news for you folks. You don't decide if an activity is any good. Somebody else does. You might think it's a brilliant idea, but if they don't think it's a brilliant idea, it ain't a brilliant idea. So you put the activity together and one person might give it a 10. Another person might give it a seven. But this man might give it something else. You might have a beautiful idea, you can see it all playing out in your head, and then you try it, and it don't work. But don't beat yourself up, because what might not work with one person will work with another person. And what might not work with one person one day might work with the same person another day, or another time of that day, or another location for that day. Try different things for different people. One size does not fit all when it comes to activity. The key to anything in care is to know the people. Think about the person you want to do an activity with. What do you know about them? What do you need to know about them? You need to know what they like. Whether they're sociable people, whether they're private people. If you were to look at me, you would say, was a very gregarious bloke, he's this, that and the other. But I'm not really. I'm a very private person. I don't like going out with a group of 15 people. I just like to sit down with one other person or two other people and have a nice conversation. That's what I enjoy. Think what people want. Some people like to be a spectator. Some people like to be in the driving seat. Some people are organizers, some people are just followers. Realise what people enjoy and realise what people don't enjoy and dislike. Because I think that's maybe more important. If you know what somebody really does dislike, then you've got a better chance of doing a lovely activity with them. Do you know what job they used to do? Because if the answer's no, that's 74,000 hours of somebody's life where you haven't got a clue what they did. I am a very different person if I've been a teacher, a vicar, a police officer, a footballer, a boxer, a dancer. I'm very different. If you don't know that, you need to fill that gap. Now here's something I would like everybody who works in activities and everybody who works in care to do, and it won't cost you a penny. You get some big pieces of paper. You lay out all of the rooms with all of the people who you care for, and you write down the room number, and you write down their name. And then you get everybody who works in that care home, everybody who works as an activity provider, everybody who is the manager, everybody who's in maintenance, everybody who's in the kitchen, everybody who's cleaning rooms, making beds, whatever you're doing. And you get everybody to take a pen round and write everything they know about that person on that blank piece of paper. Because different people know different things about people. And that is why it's important. We need to get those individual relationships and make sure that we can find out all about that person, to get that beautiful pen picture. Because the more we know, the more we can make activities fit somebody. You can't give somebody activities if you don't know what makes them tick. So, I know what somebody did for a living. Gladys over there made knickers for Marks and Spencers. She was a seamstress. She was on a machine every day. So do we give her sewing to do? Because that's what she did for 74,000 hours. Do you know what? She didn't like sewing. She did sewing because her kids needed shoes. She did sewing because there needed to be food on the table. She didn't do sewing for Marks and Spencers because she liked it. 
I used to be a bouncer on North Street in Durham when I was 20 odd stone. When I'm 85, I don't want to be breaking up fights. So think, maybe don't ask what somebody did for a living. Let's ask the question, what makes you happy? That's maybe a better question. How well do we know the people we care for? Well, here's something that will shock you. I was doing some work one day in a care home and somebody told me, we've got a gentleman here who used to be a cook. Okay, well, let's find out a little bit more about that. He used to be actually in charge of a team full of cooks. He was the head chef. I went, oh, that's interesting. Let's find out a little bit more. And he used to work in Scotland. Oh, right. So he's now in Yorkshire, but he used to work in Scotland. How exciting is that? Oh, and he used to work at a castle. Okay, right. And the castle was called Balmoral. And he used to cook for the Queen and the royal family for 25 years. We need to find out information like this. This is what makes one person different to another person, different to another person. These are stories. We need to get these stories out there now. We need to be sharing them with one another now. After their stories disappear, they're extinct. Let's bring these stories to life. So what do you need to know about me? Right, I've been a bouncer, I've been a teacher, taught teachers, I've worked for the Home Office. But do you know what, I'm not really a teacher, I've got a degree in maths. I haven't used a degree in maths for years, I haven't a clue. Eight sevens, it's 56 or 54. I've been a singer, I've been an entertainer, I play guitar, I play piano, that's quite important to me. I love football, I love basketball, I love my kids. Quite like my wife, she's not as keen. I'm from the North East, I've lived in Yorkshire. You need to know all these things. We've got to learn about the person in front of you. You need to know that I love having a laugh. I love things that are sociable, but I like them on my terms. I don't like being surrounded by a load of strangers. You need to know me. What is a successful activity? Is it an activity that involves a lot of people, or is it something that just involves you and one other person? Are activities about quantity or quality? Only you can decide. Have you ever played bingo? Bingo's great if you love a bit of bingo. A quiz is great if the questions are right. If you're asking questions about Justin Bieber to a load of 85 year olds, I don't think it's gonna work. Find the right quiz for the right people. Sometimes when you're doing an art activity together, it's not about the painting at the end. It's not about the finished product. It's about the process. It's about the enjoyment, the creativity. Let's keep people creative. Let's keep people doing the stuff that they really enjoyed when they were younger. Why would we stop? Technology. Do we use it? Shall we use technology? Is technology a good thing or a bad thing? Should we just plug somebody into an iPad and just let them do that? No, no, no. Technology is a wonderful thing if used well. It's like being a genie in a bottle. You can use YouTube and discuss with somebody. I was sat down one day and we were talking about Tommy Cooper. We were talking about Spike Milligan. We were talking about Eric Markham. And I was able just to say, watch this, watch that. And we were laughing and they went, oh, I love the two Ronnies as well. I went, right, put it on. We have that all at our fingertips. And someone said, it's amazing. How can you get all of these? We can discuss where people have been on holiday and then we can find it on Google Earth. Where people have lived and we can find their street and it's there to be used free. So how can we use technology like Spotify? Well, Spotify is amazing. It's an infinite jukebox. I was sat one day with a gentleman called Donald. You shouldn't pick your favourites, but sometimes your favourites pick you. And we got talking, and he was really in a low mood. And I said, Donald, you used to dance, didn't you? And he went, aye. I was pretty handy on my night. And we put some music on. I said, what music do you like? He says, I love Rodgers and Hammerstein. I love the musicals and I love things like Mikado and I love things like Pirates of Penzance. And I put some on and he started singing. And he had a lovely time and he was singing away and his voice was dreadful. But I just recorded it for him to watch later. I went in a couple of days later and he went, 
I don't remember that lad. And I made a deal with him, I said, right, if your memories are only going to last till the end of the day, we need to make sure that we get up every morning and we try and make some new memories. As activity providers, that's your job, to help people make a memory. That's what matters. The number of care homes are going. And I think, oh no. Glenn Miller again. Glenn Miller again. I'm not in the mood. And I think, why are they playing that? There's Mary. She's sat over there. She was born in 1940. And you're playing all your Glenn Miller stuff. And all your Vera Lynn stuff. And I'm thinking... White Cliffs of Dover. She was 17 when rock and roll arrived. She was 22 with the Beatles. She was 23 with the Stones. She was 25 with the Who. She was 30 with Elton John and Rod Stewart. She was 35 and 36 with punk and disco. And by 40, she was enjoying ABBA and Adam and the Ants. We need to be thinking, what music really fits her? Because Vera Lynn singing, We'll Meet Again. I've got some bad news. You've never met Mary before. You want a ridiculous idea? Here are some little activities we tried earlier. Let there be cuckoos A lark and a dove But first of all Please Let there be love <laughs> You're not ready for this one, I'll tell you. Right? Listen to this. See, how good does House of Pain? Oh, it's a tune, isn't it? Pat, how does this make you feel? Oh, come on! What a tune! Jump around! Right. I like it. Double clap! See, Pat! Yeah. You don't need that King Cole. No. How good's this? <laughs> it's great, isn't it? Yeah. Right, clap and tell them. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Is that too much for you, Pat? <laughs> now it looks as though they're here to stay. If you want to see what chair-based cycling looks like, watch this. I'm with these two ladies here. We have Maureen and we have Marjorie. Uh, you've got to decide which one's the good looking one. Look what Marjorie's doing. Knees up Mother Brown, I tell you what. So she's fully hydrated, fully hydrated, giving it large here. She's, yeah, she, it looks like she's having a sit down in the arms here, but she's not. She's cycling round. And here we have Maureen, and Maureen's wearing a special Nike Air Jordans there. Uh, no, she's not. She refuses, she refuses to wear sportswear, even though she's being sporty. We need drug testing at the end to make sure that neither, neither of you are using stimulants or anything. You know, it's like, it's like Lance Armstrong's grandma. Now some people don't like the idea of dolls, of using dolls with people living with dementia. Oh, I don't want my dad playing with dolls, I don't want my mum playing with dolls, it's childish, it's wrong, it's wrong, it's wrong. But let me ask a question, if there was a tablet out there, a pill that you could take that has no side effects, you just take that and it puts people at rest, it makes them feel calmer, happier, more contented with no side effects whatsoever. Would you prescribe that drug? I can't help thinking you would. And that is sometimes 
what doll therapy can give someone's mother or someone's father. If you think it's childish, if you think it's inappropriate, if you think it's wrong, your opinion doesn't matter. It's not about you. You don't decide what works. Here's a little video of what it did for me. Right, I'm not doing a ventriloquist act. Um, these are dementia dolls. Now I remember when I first saw these, I thought they were ridiculous. I thought they were a silly idea. I couldn't see how they could possibly work. They don't even look like children. They're like cabbage patch kids. But I'm just gonna show you something that happened to me. I was at UK Dementia Congress and I remember holding one of them. I started just walking up and down and I started patting the back of them and I almost started singing and I could feel myself going that rumbly noise that you do when you have little children you go mm. do you know what these make people happy they make people happy and I can understand why the comfort this thing gives you is quite remarkable from a piece of fabric and some stuffing but there are no side effects and there are no drugs there are only hugs. For once, I might not have the funniest face on this video. If you've found something that's a bit different that works, please share it on things like Facebook, Twitter, on LinkedIn. We can all copy one another's homework now and get away with it. So what you need to do with other activity providers, share what works with everyone, share what doesn't work with everyone. At one care home in Nottingham, they had somebody who used to be a car mechanic. So what they did, they got a Rover 200 and they cut it in half. This is half a Rover 200 coming out of the wall. And that's for the men who live at this lovely care home to get the bonnet up and to work on the car. And they bolted it to the wall. You could clean it, you could work on it, you could pump up the tyres, you could do all manner of stuff. And it was there in the garden. What a ridiculous idea. What a beautiful idea. One person was a farmer and you thought, right, well, let's look at some pictures of chickens and do this sort of thing. Tell you what, let's build a chicken run in the garden with their chickens. And let's look after them and get everybody out there talking to them every day. Life is not a tribute act. Let's give people real activity. Not all virtual stuff. Let's use real stuff. When I see some of these things out there when it says, look at this, it's a virtual train journey with a big telly. Why not go on the train? My mother-in-law had dementia. We took her to New York. Why do virtual stuff when you can do real stuff? Get on the train. People are now wanting to help. We're becoming more dementia friendly. Get on the train because there's people there who will help us. Do real life, don't do virtual life. Life is not a tribute act. I've seen printed timetables beautifully designed that say Monday morning, Monday afternoon, Tuesday morning, Tuesday afternoon, Wednesday morning. Oh, and you know what? They're weeks in advance. Oh, fantastic. And it says, right, we're doing reminiscence here and we're doing newspapers here. And you're just going, newspapers? Is newspapers an activity? It sounds like we're ticking a box here. With some people, they have to have these timetables out a week in advance. Do you do a timetable a week in advance in, for what you're wanting to eat that day? No, we make the choice on the day. Perhaps we need to get rid of some of these systems because head office think it's a great idea just to put it up on a wall. No, let's not tick a box. Let's ask the person in the moment, in that moment, not just on that day, in that moment, what would you like to do? Let's not plan things in advance. Let's not write things in stone. Let's not even write it in sand. And let's choose on the day, in the moment because people change and the things they like change and do you know what, our moods change. We need to make sure that our activities fit the person in front of us in that moment. So here's a question, are men forgotten about? You see in care homes, there are far fewer men. Often the activities are aimed more all around music and stuff like that. 
My dad had no interest in music whatsoever. He was all about sport. So that's why you've got people like Sporting Memories that could be useful. There was one thing I saw that I thought was beautiful. It's called the Romeo Club. Retired older men eating out. They used to go out for a meal and a pint or whatever with a few blokes and they all went out and then they'd maybe go and watch a local cricket match or a football match or a rugby match, whatever it was. And they just loved it because it was their special time. We need the right activity with the right people. Another idea, men in sheds. You hear of this all over the place where you've got lots of older men who used to love doing DIY and making stuff and mending stuff. It's not just the hands-on activity, it's just that camaraderie. It's like your very own repair shop with J Blades. Big Ian. I've seen some care homes where there's been people in the care home who help the maintenance team to do all the painting. Why not? If somebody's still got the skills, use them. If you don't use it, you lose it. So if you've got skills in your care home, use them. Just remember folks, it's not about the best activity. It's about the best activity for you. Oh, it's too cold outside, Gwen. Should we go and watch loose women? You like loose women, don't you? Yes, I do, I suppose. It's very easy just to put a telly on. It's very easy just to sit around the perimeter of a care home. It's very easy to have four walls and homes under the hammer. But every day, really, do we really want to enjoy the great indoors? Why not enjoy the great outdoors? Why not get out there into the fresh air? There's no such thing as inappropriate weather. There's only inappropriate clothing. Let's get out there. Because if you're out in the fresh air and you're getting some exercise in whatever way you can, would you leave a dog in your home for a month at a time without going out for a walk? And there will be people in care homes today who haven't seen any fresh air for some time. Let's enjoy the great outdoors, not just the great indoors. And a thing that frustrates me, I see so many websites for care homes with their beautiful lawns and their beautiful grass and their beautiful gardens. When was the last time that grass was walked on? We need to use our environments. I've seen care homes with tiny, tiny gardens and they've used every last bit. They've had chickens. One place had a caravan outside. where they have chickens with raised beds where they can grow their own vegetables. It's not pretend, it's not a tribute act. This is real activity, this is real life. If you wanna see what it's like to be left for 30 seconds without engagement, watch this. seconds. We need to make sure that choice is paramount and that the person who we're caring for, their choice matters most. We need to make sure that we don't remove choice, that we don't do too much for somebody, that we don't choose their clothes. I know this is silly but it's all part of it. These will do for today Gwen, these go nice together. Well I like these better, the deep colour. Gwen I'll do it, come on look it's quicker. If you get somebody to, to make their bed with you, it's an activity. If you get somebody to make breakfast with you, we're doing things side by side. We're doing things together. I remember somebody said, she picks out my clothes. She brushes my hair. She does my shoelaces. So what do I do? We need to make sure that people are independent with us, not dependent on us our everyday activities, all the things that we would just do 
we make sure that they keep going. Try and give people as close to the life they had before and then we are getting our activities and we are getting all aspects of that care right. We put together a campaign. It was called My Health, My Safety. And it was an individual thing. And it was all about risk and not being risk averse. Instead, taking the odd risk and thinking, right, a life without risk is mere existence. It said on one of the slides, I'm somewhere between agile and fragile. Find out where. Because that person in front of you, their needs can change, their physical needs can change, dementia can change. Let's try and do the same things differently. It's not all about budget. I went round charity shops and I got old, horrible pictures and I said, can I have those for a dementia project, please? I got some old photographs that I actually copied on my phone and then printed off so that I wasn't using the original photos and then we created these picture frames and we put names on of people and who they were to people and the things that they loved. Have a look at this. This is a project you could do in your care home and it costs absolutely nothing. And see the difference that this made to Liz. She jumps around this picture like a wasp. But do you know what? It's beautiful. Right, go on. That's, oh, who's that? That's uh, you with Stella. With Stella? Who's this? What's it say? Oh, isn't she gorgeous? My little brother Stephen. So that's you? Yeah, and then there's Liz. <laughs> I mean, Liz White. Everybody calls me Liz White. <laughs> That's your name. That's your name. <laughs> I like this. Oh, this is Billy, isn't it? Oh, that's Billy. That's Billy, and yeah. that's... That was when I went to St. Leonard's, wasn't it? Yeah. Hospice. Oh, what is it? Uh, I love you, Nana. <laughs> and there's Matty. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, Matthew. So what do you think of this, then? I think that's great. Do you like it? That's lovely. It can be used to start any conversation because in this one picture frame you can see the person and you know the person instantly and what matters to them. When my dad had dementia, it was terrible because he forgot how amazing he was. So we put together a dossier, a whole album, so that anyone who came and met my dad for the first time didn't think he was Charles Donaghy. January the 17th, 1936. One hip replacement, one leg that didn't work, rosacea of the nose, claims to be allergic to tomatoes, but he just didn't like them, he was just building his part. That's not what my dad was. In this album, we had everything about my dad's sporting background, the jobs he'd done, the people he'd met, all this sort of thing. It was all there. So that somebody had a pen picture of who my dad was. Music wasn't his thing. And, and that he loved reading the paper and he loved talking about things and he loved organising people. And that's what we need to do. We need to know our people. So here's a little activity we did during lockdown with my dad. Oh, oh Gilly! Oh, There's no such thing as a ridiculous idea. Not when it comes to activity. We need to bring generations together, become part of the community, bring schools together, bring music groups together, invite people into your care home and then get yourself out of the care home and be part of that community. Magic happens when generations come together. I went into one care home. And there was a gentleman there and he hadn't spoken for months. And I found out from his daughter that he met his wife at a concert in the 1980s from a singer called Paul Young. I had a guitar in the back of my car and I thought, I think I know one of those songs. So this happened next. This 
is where an activity really connects. So it goes. Every time you go away, you take a piece of me with you. Whoa. Every time you go away, you take a piece of me. somebody over there needs a cuddle. <laughs> Give them a cuddle. Bless you. So activity, it's all about connection. It's all about little interactions that are going to make a massive difference. Now some activities will have the whole room involved and everybody will be singing and clapping and dancing. But others could be just a lady in a room singing a hymn with you because she doesn't like crowds but she loves singing hymns. You have to find what works for the person in front of you. So what ridiculous ideas have you seen? Well, I tell you what, try this one. I was in one place one day and there was absolute mayhem coming from the library. I went in, I thought, what on earth is going on there? I opened the door, I see people sat down in their armchairs with fly swatters and a balloon and they are playing fly, swatter, balloon, badminton. Ridiculous idea, I had a go. I got in a chair, I had a go. Can I be right? 15 minutes in, I am sweating. The place is competitive. I'll tell you now, Audrey in there, she was a demon. Okay, believe me. Rafa Nadal would have been running around because of her. A ridiculous idea? Yes. Did it work? Yes. Was everybody laughing? Yes. Did everybody have a fantastic cup of tea and a load of cake afterwards? Yes. Are we doing it again next week? Yes. Ridiculous ideas. That's what we want. We want ideas that make people feel a bit ridiculous. Being ridiculous is a great thing. If we're all ridiculous, then nobody is ridiculous. So sometimes with an activity, we need to drop our guard a bit. Think, shall we sing? Yeah. Shall we dance? Yeah. Shall we take ourselves too seriously? No. Take what you do seriously, but don't take yourself too seriously. Here's a ridiculous idea. I've done it loads. I've done it with care staff. I've done it with people living in care. I've done it with loads of people. And it costs, now, all it takes is yesterday's newspapers and some sellotape and you say right we're going to put on a fashion show you're going to go to the oscars and you are going to be there on the red carpet tell me what color dress you'd like and what we do is we imagine that newspaper is that color and then we get everybody to muck in and join in and say right you're making something bespoke it's couture it's not off the hanger and then you do a catwalk show and everybody gets excited and it's fun and it's ridiculous and it's silly and everyone's having loads of fun this is perfect for you and then what you do you get everybody to muck in and they all make a dress and they all create and it doesn't look like a load of newspaper and it looks incredible it looks like things like these and it costs nothing nothing you can do this today and i'll tell you now it works so why don't we make people's dreams come true People use the term bucket list. Why? Let's not do bucket list as if to say we have to do this before we die. Let's look at it another way and call them dreams and say this is what we do when we're alive. I had some people desperately wanted to go in a helicopter. So this happened. What have we been to see this morning? <laughs> Good night. Hey! Are you excited, Ivan? His hearing aids come out. Too excited there, Ivan. Are you all wobbly? <laughs> <laughs> Have you got all wobbly, Ivan? Yeah. That's what's up in there. <laughs> How was that? How was that then, Ivan? How was it? Lovely, though. Guys, what do we say? Thank you. This is Steve, who not only has given his time today, he's given us his helicopter, his fuel, his absolute skills and everything. Can we have a round of applause for Steve for being no. an absolute top man? Roy, who was 94. And he had a dream. 
at 94 whilst living with dementia. He wanted to score a goal for Notts County, who he'd supported all of his life. We made this happen. This went viral all around the world. What, a music festival? A music festival with older people and younger people and everyone together? Let's see what that looks like. Is it cool to go to sleep on the floor When I don't think I can sing anymore Dan played piano, but when he asked him, he said he didn't know any songs. So we brought in a pianist called Kieran to sit alongside him, and this happened next. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll go with you, okay? Yeah. Oh. Do things at my pace, not necessarily the pace you're wanting to go at. Make an activity fit my pace. Why bother? Why bother? She's got dementia. She's 94. Why bother? We do a thing called Christmas presents. And one year we invited a lot of people to have a party in the centre of York. And we got all the people organised and we had all of the people from Age UK and we had the big list and we ticked them in and we ticked them out and we made sure we had drivers and we had the best food and they had everything. Everything went so well. We had a great time. There was singing, there was dancing, there was, it was just glorious. It was a family Christmas with people who were alone. And then on December the 27th, my phone went and my heart turned to stone. You forgot somebody. You forgot them. There was a lady called Maria. I'm one of her carers. You left her at home on Christmas day. Now I can't tell you how that made me feel. I can't. It was like I just had a rock in my chest where my heart used to be. It wasn't about the other 50 people who'd had a great time. It was about the one person who we left behind. How can we have left somebody behind? I have a really good team, and I'm on it, and they were on it. And we made sure, and we looked through all the paperwork, and we went, right, let's check this, Maria, right, okay, Maria. Well, she's ticked off as being there, and she's ticked off as going home. And then we looked at the photos, and we found people with badges, and there was a lady there. And she was called Maria. And she was beautiful, and she was funny, and she was charming, and she was having a great time. She was with my friend Gordon, having a dance, a big tattooed Glaswegian in a daft hat. And she thought he was great. And then there was a little bit where we were talking, and she was eating far too many desserts, and she really hit the cheese board, and she left with a load, a load of gifts in her hamper. She was there on Christmas Day. We had proof of her there on Christmas Day. We had photos, we had video, we had everything of her on Christmas Day. But on the 27th, her carer went round to her home. And it had gone. The memory had gone. 
like an etched sketch that had been shaken up and the picture dissolved. One of my friends said, why bother? Why bother? Why put all that in if somebody's not going to remember it? Why? It's pointless. It's worthless. If it's not going to last there, scrap it. It's not worth your rattle. Well, he's wrong. It is worth my hassle, as he put it. Because even though on the 27th, that memory's gone. On the 25th, in that moment, she was having the best time. She was having the best company, the best laugh. She was singing, she was dancing, she was overindulging in everything. There was a certain amount of Baileys being drunk. And you know what? She was having a great time. Now, if that only lasts till her going to bed and then it's gone, well, that's fair enough. Memories are sometimes like fireworks. Think when you've been to a firework display. You don't necessarily remember all about it. But when those fireworks are going off into the sky and they're making all that noise and they're lighting up your face and they're making you feel amazing, that's good enough for you, isn't it? Because in the moment, that's what it is. Bang, bang, exciting, great. So folks, if a memory's only going to last today, if it's only going to last today, and then we go to bed and it disappears. Look at it this way. Make a deal. Get up tomorrow and make another new memory. And if that's only going to last till tea time, get up the day after and make another new memory. And just look at your life as a firework display. Send new rockets into the sky every day and let them light up your face with light and warmth. And that is why people with dementia and people without dementia all deserve the best. So I hope from this little talk and some of these examples of these ridiculous ideas that suddenly came to life and made people smile, that activity isn't an afterthought. Activity needs to be our first thought. Activity needs to be written through our care like Blackpool Rock. Activity isn't icing. It's part of the cake.